George Russell's Lydian chromatic concept brought into the language of jazz music a whole gamut of colourful terms. Some of these terms have become part of the jazz language without many people understanding where lies the origin. Words like ingoing and outgoing, vertical and horizontal are now part of the jazz language. Other terms are more obscure. Russell himself used his concept as a study text for playing all kinds of music. The Lydian chromatic concept can help you improvise or compose over any kind of music. A very bold statement. In the introduction to the 1959 edition, Russell writes, In preparing for any business, trade or science, we generally need a great deal of preparation and study. In painting, literature and music, we also need to learn the tools of our trade. The artist needs paint to express himself, while the jazz musician uses tonal resources. The Lydian chromatic concept is an organisation of the tonal resources from which the jazz musician may draw to create his improvised lines. It is like an artist's palette. The paints and colours in the form of scales and or intervallic motives waiting to be blended by the improviser. Like the artist, the jazz musician must learn the techniques of blending his materials. The student is made aware of the whole chromatic situation surrounding the chord vertical or a tonal centre horizontal. It is believed that this knowledge will liberate the student's melodic inhibitions and help him to intelligently penetrate and understand the entire chromatic universe. The professional player finds himself having to adapt to many types of music and musicians. The Lydian chromatic concept provides him with the material to improvise according to the situation at hand. The concept will provide the player with the proper resources for any type of music he may encounter. Keeping in mind what we have just heard from Russell regarding the fact that the student should be aware that the concept is an organisation of the tonal resources and that he is made aware of the whole chromatic situation, let us look at some of the people teaching the Lydia chromatic concept on YouTube and see if they stand up to Russell's statement. In his video entitled Modern Jazz Lydian Chromatic Concept, creator Walk That Bay states that the Lydian scale removes tonality itself. C major 7 chord. Instead of the C major scale, we now have a scale with no avoid notes over that C major 7 chord. And by getting rid of the F, we remove that tritone interval between the B and the F, which is the basis of the dominant chord and thus the dominant tonic relationship. And thus, in a sense, we've removed tonality itself. This is untrue. Russell would state that tonality of some kind would always exist. Tonality is the orientation of a piece of music around a particular pitch, and tonal gravity is, after all, the fundamental principle of the concept. Russell would answer, walk that bass by stating that the tonality is still there. It has just changed because the tonal gravity has changed from horizontal to vertical and the tritone he states in C major has now moved to chord 2 of the Lydian scale and is between the F sharp and C. In his video on modal jazz, Walk That Bass states that tonal music and playing in functional harmony is vertical playing, yet Russell has stated many times that music within a tonal framework can be either horizontal or vertical. Walk That Bass's videos are a very good example of seeing music solely from the point of view of the dominant major scale thinking. In Adam Neely's video on the Lydia chromatic concept, he states that unity is caused by stacking perfect fifths, which is again not the case. Theories behind why it works, to me, were a little strange. Like, he came up with this whole idea of unity, which is, I think, interesting, because what you do is you stack perfect fifths on top of one another, and then if you have six perfect fifths in a row, you get a Lydian scale. Unity, according to Russell, is not solely to do with a stack of perfect fifths, but means chord scale unity. According to Russell, the perfect scale to match a given chord, or the perfect chord to match a given scale, which is always some form of Lydian scale. This also brings up another problem that people assume about the Lydian chromatic concept, and that is that the Lydian scale is a mode. 
Russell does not call either the Lydian or major scale modes. The Lydian scale is not a mode of the major scale and the major scale is not a mode of the Lydian scale. They are two separate entities that function differently. In discussion with Rick Beato, Adam Neely asked Rick if he ever uses Russell scales. And for you personally, uh, have you ever really thought about these Lydian scales when you personally have been improvising or composing? Uh, my concept was very developed at the time I studied with George. And to me, it added a layer of thinking that I would always be referencing things that I knew. Using the material, you're still going to play the same, you know, you're going to use it in the same way that you would use it. It's only yeah. in analysis that it really comes to bear, I think. Jack this is not good because the whole idea of the Lydia chromatic concept is to relate everything to a single tonic, the primary Lydian tonic. If you are constantly moving back and forth between conventional thinking and Lydia chromatic concept thinking, you are basically wasting your time, in my opinion. One interesting observation that Adam Neely makes is the number of scales listed in the concept. Neely writes the caption, Look at all these effing scales and we can sympathise with his statement. The Lydian chromatic concept does have a lot of scales, or as Russell would call them, chord modes. The term chord mode means a unity of chord and scale. However, for simplicity I will call this chord and chord scale as I think most people would better understand and be more familiar with the Berkeley terminology of chord scale. However, bear in mind that Russell sees the chord and the scale that goes with it one and the same. The chord is the vertical aspect of the scale and the scale is the horizontal aspect of the chord. The word harmony to Russell does not just mean sounding a series of notes in some kind of vertical stack. To him, harmony means the harmony of chord scale unity and this harmony can only be achieved by one of the seven principal scales of the Lydian chromatic concept. In his 208 paper, Lydian Chromatic Concept Discrepancies, Jeff Brent makes some devastating attacks on George Russell. Inconsistencies, discrepancies and outright falsehoods such as those mentioned above make the student's job of first successfully deciphering and then subsequently assimilating this material next to impossible and much more work than should be necessary to grasp this subject set of theoretical chord scale musical possibilities. If someone has trouble understanding a concept, is it the author's fault for not being able to get the point across in a succinct manner or is it the fault of the learner? The author states on page 224 that he realised that he couldn't keep something so powerfully evident in nature a secret. If something so powerfully evident in nature couldn't be kept a secret, then why have only a small minority of musicians ever heard of this book, and an even smaller number have read it? Not to mention the much smaller number of those who claim to have understand it, and have ever found it useful. There are several reasons that the Lydian chromatic concept never became widely thought of as an alternative way to describe music, besides the hard to read proprietary language it's written in. The main reason being by not having it published by a major publishing house at a reasonable price point, the masses have been prevented from gaining access to the book. But by keeping the book out of the hands of the general public, he has also kept it out of the hands of the critics and experts in the field of physics and music, most of whom would have certainly pointed out the flaws in both the concept and also the many errors found within the book. In the case of this article, something so powerfully not evident in nature unquestionably couldn't be kept a secret. The first part of Brent's attack is that the F-sharp of the Lydian scale is not represented by the harmonic series. He states that the cadential movement of the major scale is a much more natural phenomenon than the Lydian scale, and in his book Modology shows that the construction of the major scale is much more simple and elegant than that of the Lydian scale. Choosing D as our central note, the two most harmonically consonant notes are either a perfect fourth above or a perfect fourth below. As seen, D harmonises perfectly with either A or G. Expanding that formula to the interval of a perfect fourth on either side yields the second level of RS consonants. Rearranging the order of the notes, we get the UR scale A minor pentatonic. 
Taking this logic of force one step further, the following seven note pitch set was discovered, which rearranged similarly yields the radically symmetrical structure which is commonly known as the natural minor or aeolian mode. This formula of scale degrees continues to be in the top three favourite tonal centres for most musicians and composers. The addition of the notes B and F into the A minor pentatonic scale creates an interval of great tension. This special interval is known as a tritone. The tensions created by the tritone call for the B to resolve upper half step to the C and for the F to resolve chromatically down to the E. Once this radically symmetrical harmonic movement, cadence, has taken place, the natural resolution falls squarely on the two defining notes of the C major triad, C and E. The introduction of the unstable tritone and its tendency to collapse symmetrically to resolve to the two defining components of the C major triad is a reason that the seven note pitch set of the tonal centre of C major became so popular. In just a few words, Brent has explained why the major scale gained popularity. The resolution of a leading note and subdominant to root and third in a harmony situation is hard to ignore. In the Lydia Chromatic concept in Appendix 1, Reed Gratz spent six dense pages justifying the Lydian scale in history. On page 241, he states that the phenomenon of tension and release, goal-oriented, organised Western religions and philosophies, climbing the social ladder, getting ahead, planning for tomorrow, all fit easily within Western European music, the music of the common practice era. I've heard this argument before and I don't like it. The major scale did not arise because the Europeans forced it on the rest of the world. The major scale arose in Europe from the ascendancy of opera in the early 17th century. Italian opera sought to bring to life the musical emotions of the ancient Greeks. The word painting, madrigals and polyphony of the late Renaissance could not express the emotion of the human heart in the way that a single voice, supported by a homophony background, could. Dido's Lament, which is based loosely on the legend of Dido of Carthage, is an aria written by Henry Purcell for his opera Dido and Aeneas. Dido falls in love with the Greek Aeneas after his landing in Africa and the Lament tells of Dido's impending suicide after she is abandoned by Aeneas at the command of the god Jupiter. Does this very simple progressive harmony bring to mind social climbing, getting ahead or planning for tomorrow? No it does not because the development of the major minor tonality in music was not based on those elements but a better way to understand the human condition. To be fair on Russell, in my opinion he would not agree with Grant, even though this is printed in his book. Russell believed that the major tonality was part of the nature of music, but major tonality cannot explain everything in music as a Lydian chromatic concept can. Returning to Jeff Brent. Brent then attacks Russell on his scale to chord choices in chart A chord modes. I've checked all Brent's criticism and agree with all his findings. This is quite bad. The chords on mode 7 Lydian and Lydian augmented are all wrong and should be minor chords. The chords on mode 6 of the Lydian diminished scale don't make any sense, nor does the term diminished tetrachord which also appears on the auxiliary diminished scale. Brent also shows that the spellings of some chords are incorrect. I think this is a pretty devastating attack. These chord scales are obviously wrong and in the nearly 50 years since the first edition of the Lydia Chromatic Concept was published, why have they not been corrected? It's not like we are looking at a small mistake. This is huge! In his final conclusion, Brent lists the main points that he gleaned from the concept. Number one, it's okay to play sharp four. Number two, I can play a whole bunch of scales, the same scales that I already know, over chords, the same chords that I already know, but I have to learn to call them different names. Number three, a side effect of the lack of unity makes the level of physical violence more prevalent. Number four, 
the author thinks the Star Spangled Banner is Lydian. Considering these inconsistencies, we might ask if there is anything worth saving in Russell's ideas. He is probably right that most people prefer the sound of the stack of thirds on the right with the F sharp, and the Lydian scale does have some practical advantage over the major scale. Though we may not share Russell's preoccupation with the Lydian scale, we should not let his idiosyncratic views distract us from the more important points of his theory. We can correct the chord scales or chord modes above, and isn't it true that theorists are used to adapting worthwhile theoretical ideas from authors without assuming their entire world view? Brent may be right in that the Lydia chromatic concept is basically useless, and that chord scale equivalence put forward by Adam Neely and the Berkeley crowd is not only simple, but the way to go. Gone is the complicated derivation of Lydian parent scales, in its place a simpler one-to-one -one matching of scales with chord symbols. At the same time though, something seems lost. For Russell, Lydian organisation of tonal space was not incidental, but the most important idea in the book. Its title after all is The Lydian Chromatic Concept of Tonal Organisation, and not Chord Scale Equivalence and Jazz Improvisation or the like. Rather than simply writing off Russell's more unusual ideas as eccentric rambling, we will aim in future videos to reincorporate some of them in an effort to assimilate some of the first jazz theory back into modern scholarship.